Blog Hollow. Today's tutorial is on my global design project which you got a sneak peek of on Facebook during the week. It is this cute little shaker box using the new uh, hexagonal die from Stampin' Up! in the Occasions catalogue. I've used some resist embossing which will go through how to do the window shakers and also how to assemble one of these boxes and win with these little um, panels on the side as well. So let's get started. So here's our box in a little bit more detail just before we do get started. Um, I can show you here. So you can see we're going to do some resist here on the little shells. Uh, we've got our lovely sequins in there and we're going to colour in our fishes and I've even done, just tuck those out of the way, you can see there's some little bubbles as well. So I pre-cut everything and as usual your cutting recipe will be on the blog uh, which is linked in the bottom right hand corner. You need to cut two of the uh, hexagonal box out the New Occasions catalogue you need to cut one, just the lid in dapper denim to match my nails, as you can see. And then I did six panels around the edge. Let me just grab mine. And I've pre-cut those. So the six panels, if I just grab the dies, which are here, are this one here, which I thought looked like some nice little bubbles from the fishes. And I did those in the real red and again in the dapper denim. So what I did was I cut three uh, on each colour. And they just impress. So the idea is that you could um, do them on here and you'd have the spots, but I wanted a contrast colour. And then what I found was using the layering squares, um, there is a perfect size here. So the originals on here I cut with my uh, trimmer and they're one and a half inch square. But I actually used this square instead when I was prepping for this. I had a bit of a brainwave. And this one from outer edge to outer edge is one and what should we say, just over, just under one and three quarters, outer edge to outer edge, inner edge is just under the one and a half mark. So I will measure them exactly for you and I will pop that on the cutting list for you as well. So what I did was just layer those up like so and I'm just going to pop this to the big shot next to me. So I've got three dapper denim and three in the real red. And there are for our um, sides. And then I also stamped out these little fishes, again in real red and dapper denim, and they have a coordinating die. They come from the jar of Love Set. So let me just have that here. So it's this little fish here, and these aren't shown at full size, they're 75%. So when you stamp him out, he's this size. And in the jar of Love framelots that go with it, there is a um, fish. So the first thing I find found with this box is the best thing to do is just go over all the score lines with your bone folder, which is here, and just score them so that you've got a nice crisp fold. The framelets really do help you with the initial um, piece, but if you fold it yourself, oh, that's a bit too far, you'll get a nice um, finish to your box. I'm just lifting these. I know it's slightly out of camera shot, um, just so I can see them. Make sure they're actually on the fold lines. So the framelits do have, I'll show you on the other one in just a second, do already do some of the pre-creasing for you, but there are two lines and you want to make sure you fold on the correct one. So let me just show you that in a second. If you do this, you'll find your box assembly goes much, much quicker. I've been making some of the playful pal boxes. I've been making 52 of those. And I spent an hour one evening whilst watching the TV just pre-folding them. And that saved me a huge amount of time when I've assembled them. So let me show you what I mean about the fold lines. This one's got a little fleck of red in it. So here we go. Here's where we've cut. So you have this square embossed line around here. And then you have an outer deeper crease, which is the one that you actually want to fold on here. So I want to fold along there, and along there, along here, and along here. If you fold down these other lines, like I did originally, because I was just trying to do it quickly, you do get some little tears in your box. You won't notice it once you've decorated it, 
um, but just for a better more professional finish just make sure you fold on those lines and the same with the octagon you can see there's a line here but all the way around less probably about 16th of an inch in it's just a little embossed line to give it a nice detail so that's all of that done and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the blue piece for my lid so I've got this piece of dapper denim that I did and I'm going to cut along that line which was my fold line and then I'm going to cut my tabs off as well you can use your stamping trimmer or if you feel your hands are steady enough you can use your scissors there we go Get rid of those and then I'm going to stick this onto the top. So I wanted this to cover it all the way around. And I'm going to grab my, my snail gun. So it's going to snail that up. And I'm going to stick it on one side. So I was deciding that this is going to be my lid side when I get there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble um, my box flat. So to do that, I use my silicone mat and you need to put some snail along here. And what I find, so I lay, I line this part of my snail up with that 1 16th line because I know my snail is just slightly inside of that plastic piece. And then any extra snail just goes straight onto my silicone mat and it's not going to harm anything. Now when you stick these two together, you're going to stick this tab fold it over and you're going to stick it down like so so that your two lids are opposite so you want one pointing up one pointing down that gives you your top and your bottom to your box okay so while it's flat packed like this I found the easiest way was to do my sides now and again with this I use my snail now you could use glue because I'm going to stick something over it you never actually feel any of the sticky and the thickness of the card. So I do one blue, one red, one blue. So some spots in here. You will um, need a poker or ideally this dye brush makes it a lot, lot quicker. There are a lot of little spots in here that get caught. You can see they're still coming out here. Take these off my workspace. So just go along your box, sticking these down. As I say, it was a bit of a brainwave that I thought I have these layering squares, I really should use them. But if you don't have them, just cut these with a paper trimmer. Uh, they do emboss a slight little edge around them, which you can follow. And a one and a half inch square is absolutely perfect um, to cut these out. It would also look really pretty if you did them in a glimmer. They might look like the sea. and then a blue and a red okay so that's our box assembled on the edges now this bit's much easier to do and it's flat rather than when it's uh, assembled because you can press down nicely which you can't do when the box is, is fully done now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my fishes and I did those alternate. Now just to show you, so if I just fold my box like so, you see that this is, there's my bottom, there's my top. So my fishes want to go on and I did them, so blue on red, like this way up. So you think that this is your top? your fish is going on here again I use a little bit of snail if you wanted to you could use a dimensional underneath them um, but this I'm probably likely going to mail to someone so I didn't want too much dimension that could get damaged so you just go along and stick your fishes on So 
that is our finished box. So we can now assemble our box. Again, to do that, I'm going to grab my silicone mat and I'm going to tape up all of my tabs before I stick it together because once you start assembling it's not that easy to get tape onto them and you only want to do one side so I am doing my bottom side because if I do my top side I won't be able to open and close the box so the first thing I did was I stuck this one down like this so that I'm actually building my base as I go and this I found this I did a couple of attempts of different ways to do it it was the easiest way to build a solid box because you marry it up tab by tab and keep going around and around a little bit more tape on this one And you can just run it against your fingers if you need to. Um, if you take them all up first, it's a lot easier. There we go. And for the last one, bend this one back, put this one up against the folded edge, and then press your bottom down. And you can see there I've got a nice solid base to my box. And this is where it's going to open afterwards for me to fill it up with some goodies. And then making sure everything's stuck down. This one's not quite as well stuck as I'd like it to be. There we go. Okay, so that's the base of our box, which I'm going to put to one side for now. And we're going to build this shaker element. So for our shaker, you need three elements. You've got the uh, real red circle. You have your window sheet and you have your white piece and let me show you how I um, did mine so first of all the red piece I have two of the circles and let me just roughly give you the dimensions so this one is about two and seven eighths and the other one is about two and three eighths outer edges but I will link exactly which ones they are in the blog post and I tape them together. So this is a piece of surgical tape. I spent a bit of time on my desk just lining them up exactly right and I put two little pieces on them which is great if you want to cut quite a few um, rims if you're doing some favours or something particularly with this box you might want to do them for a birthday party and then I cut them like so. I just pop that onto my Big Shot, run it through and I know that they're all going to be the same thickness and nice and even. My red, my window sheet rather, is the same as the big outer circle because I can just line that up underneath. And then this middle piece, which is the one we're going to stamp on, is the um, circle, if I line that there, is just in between those two. So you can see it nests almost exactly right. Um, and I find that that is better to give you the right effect for your window. And this one is just a touch so it'd be two and five eighths so again I will link those all up for you and the next thing we're going to do is the fun bit we're going to stamp our inside of our shaker so I'm going to use the seaside shore for that and I've pre-made my masks ready we'll get to those in a minute so I want two fish some bubbles and we'll have some shells we'll go for a smaller shell and we want some of the seaweed so the first thing I'm going to do is my resist embossing so I have all my kit here so I'm just going to run over it with my embossing buddy to make sure there's no static on there I'm going to open this up and for that I did a re resist for my shell and my um, starfish so let me ink those up here and I'm going to do a couple of starfish around the edge and a couple of shells and then the bubbles I actually did afterwards so we'll come back and do a little bit more embossing in just a second and I did it with the white embossing powder you could do it with the clear because that would show through as well and I'm just going to grab my 
there's a couple where I've just caught the edge of the stamp, which is harder to see in the Versa mark. But you can see if I bring it closer up that they're nicely aligned. And I've left this space in the middle to put my seaweed into. Let me just put my embossing powder away before I bring the tool out. And a couple of people asked me where I got my little um, red tray from, embossing tray. I'll link to these um, in the blog post as well and let you know where you can get one. They are perfect for heat embossing. So right now I'm just uh, setting my white powder. And if you've never done heat embossing before, I do have a video um, on the how-to, so I will link to that in the blog post as well. that is those done and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my fish so I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of paper and a block and this is the basic black archival pad so I want this fish on this side and I'm going to line him up so he just goes past my shells, like so. And each one I find when I do these comes out different. I did a couple um, when I was getting ready. And then this fish I'm going to do round about here. And then the last thing I'm going to do just before I do the heat setting again is I'm going to grab a block and I'm going to do my bubbles because I want to heat set my archival because I'm going to colour it in fairly quickly uh, with the stamp and markers and that will just give you a better finish. So I'm just going to stamp my bubbles coming out the top there and we need some white. Where did I put my bits and pieces? Here they are. This is another little tool I found. Um, it looks a bit like an eyelash, uh, eyeshadow applicator, but it is perfect for just getting in those areas where you don't want your um, embossing powder to stick to. There we go. And we'll get rid of that. And just the final thing I'm going to stamp before we do the heat set are my grasses or seaweed or I don't know what we want to call them and to do that again with the black archival pad and I'm going to have that coming up out the bottom here and you can keep just going round until you've got as much as you would like so they're my reeds that are going to come out of the bottom. Okay. So let's just, I'm going to heat set that. Firstly to heat set the um, embossing powder. And secondly, I want to just heat set that archival pad so I can colour it straight in now. Be careful not to heat the previous powder too much. Um, otherwise you can overcook it and it will go bubbly and it's not a particularly nice effect not for this card anyway so that's our little panel and we're now going to add some color to it so I'm going to grab um, yellow this is the daffodil delight and I'm going to do his stripes in yellow like so And then I wanted to give it a really nice blue eye and I went with the uh, Tempting Turquoise and that's just, and I do his eye the same just because that pops I think really nicely, the blue eyes in the ocean. 
Um, now the other one I also did in yellow, but let's see what else we can choose. Let's go for some island indigo for some stripes. I'm going to do every other stripe. And it doesn't matter if you colour over the white embossing powder, I'll show you what happens in a second if you do do that. And we will have, I think we will go with the same yellow for the alternates. And I'm going to do his face in the yellow too. do his fin in the blue, just tie it all together, and we'll do his tail again in the yellow. Now if you do happen to go um, over the white pieces, grab a piece of kitchen towel and you can just wipe it over. And the other thing you can use if it's a small area like this, is you can just use a q-tip. So if I grab my q-tip and just go over it here, you can see it's just picked up anything that was already over the embossing. So that's that. And now we just need to do our um, seaweed. So I'm going to choose three shades of green. So here I have Cucumber Crush, Always Artichoke and Wild Wasabi. You could use any shades of green. And I'll just go gently over these. And we'll just go so so I'm just adding a little bit of um, texture and depth to those. So there's our ocean. Now we need to make our ocean blue. So to do that, we're going to use the dapper denim. And I have two options for you here. So you can either use the Stampin' Up sponge, which works absolutely fine. But I bought these, and I'll send you. A, I'll give you a link in the blog post. These are barber brushes uh, that barbers would use to put shading foam on, and they give you a really nice light texture. So I'm going to bring back our scrap piece to do that. I've made some masks here out of, I used Eclipse tape, but you can also use Post-it tape. So all I did was stamp uh, my, each of my fish, and they're not sticking particularly well anymore. So I'm just going to use a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back. One way around. Okay. And some temporary adhesive on this one. So just stamp them out, they don't have to be very well done, This is I stamped them originally on my piece and then stamped them straight onto the Eclipse tape. And you can also use, so Eclipse tape comes in a big roll like this, it's just basically a big post-it note. You can also just get post-it tape which works perfectly, so I'll link both of those for you. And I'm just going to stick those down and then I'm going to dab into my dapper denim. Now I start as usual on my scrap piece and then I'm just going to keep my fingers on these just so that they don't go too blue and then I work in a circular motion and I wouldn't worry about your seaweed too much because it is behind, it is in the sea. There we go. So we have a nice blue shade and you can go as dark as you'd like. So if you want some areas, I'm going to go for some more speckly areas like that. So you can see now when I remove my masks, my fish are swimming in a nice blue sea. So let's get rid of that piece over there and the temporary adhesive. I'm just going to get rid of my ink pad because I have a terrible habit of ending up putting things into them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that kitchen towel I had earlier and I'm just rubbing very carefully over those embossed areas so you can see your shells shine through. Now, 
something I found really useful is if you put a little bit of the stamping mist onto your Q-tip, I'm just going to do it off the table so it doesn't go everywhere, and then you just take it over the top very gently of your resist areas, you can make it really pop back out. So here we are. So you see those starfish are now really white. And if I do the same on my bubbles, my bubbles now really pop back out again. Okay, so that's just one thing that I find really useful. So the next thing we need to do is assemble our shaker. So first of all, I'm gonna put my white twine um, around the edge like this to make it, I thought of the um, life boys. So to do that, let me just find an end. There we go. So I'm just gonna cut, I didn't actually measure this, a length of twine, that's probably 15 inches or so that I've cut, and cut that into four. Now a good marker is the actual lines that come off the card. You see here there's a, a natural kink in it where it's been lined up around the card, and that's perfect length, because you don't need a huge amount, and you need some glue dots. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put on a glue dot. At this point, it doesn't matter where your first glue dot and then I stuck my twine to the back of it and I wrapped it around. So wrap it all the way and then just keep scooching it back up to itself. So just keep going. Okay, that's enough. And then I push them all together like that. And I put another glue dot on the back, so I'm just going to pick up a glue dot, and I stick that on the back there. I'm just going to trim my twine slightly, and I stick that on. And then the next one you do, you want it to be opposite. So I'm going to start my glue dot just slightly off to the right, like so. And again, stick your twine to the back, keep winding it round. Like so, and again, trim the twine, add a glue dot, Ooh. what sides are wrong for this side, wrong side, there we go, and you're going to wind that around and let it stick, and just scooch them all up again together. Like so, Ooh, you've come unstuck. And then you're going to do that to all four. So when you've done all four, it will look something like this. And then our next stage is to glue this onto our window panel, which for that I'm going to use the fine tip glue pen. You can use any adhesive, the Tombow works fine if that's all you've got. You can also use the old crystal effects if that's all you have. And then I go around paying special attention to those twine areas because the twine will absorb the glue it's okay if you can hear it we're not having an earthquake it's my girls playing upstairs in the lounge with daddy there we go i'm just going to stick my needle back in and then i'm going to stick the window panel to the red piece. So let's just line that up nicely. And remember they are the same size so they should line up perfectly. If they don't you can just um, trim it down with your scissors or your snips afterwards. Okay that's stuck perfectly well for now. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build the shaker element. So let me just grab my embossing buddy again. So to do that, liberally use your embossing buddy all over your acetate piece and your bottom piece again. And then you're going to need the foam strips. So I'm going to grab one of the foam strips here. You can see it's a piece off the middle of our boy. And I am going to stick it onto my fishy piece. 
keeping as close to the edge as I can. So I'm probably about a sixteenth of the way in, like this. And then when you get to the end, just snip it off and tuck it in. If you press it hard enough, it will go. And the other thing I suggest you do at this point, if you can, if you have the tear tape, this is the ideal time to use it. So I tore a few pieces off and stuck them on. Put those in half. Now the reason I did this is once I build my shaker, it's very difficult to use your snail or your fast fuse on the back. So if you do have the tear tape, I really advise you to use it on the back ready. Now again, I'm going to get my embossing buddy again. And this is how I don't get my sequins to stick. Where's my original box? Here. You see, none of them stick. They all just move around nicely. Well, a lot of shakers, it's very easy to get them to stick to this edge here. Um, and to prevent that, Again, I take my embossing buddy, fold it in half, and I really try to get it in those grooves like this. And by putting the embossing buddy on, it just takes away any of the adhesive that might be on the side um, from the manufacturing process. So that's my top tip there for shakers. Okay, nice. so I got a little ahead of myself taking the adhesive off. We don't need to do that yet, so just just stuck it back on for a second and then I've used the sprinkles embellishments from the sweet treats sweet which is all the lovely ice cream um, goodies that are in there and then I just gently tap the side like this until I feel I have enough now this never looks like very much when you put it in there like this but you don't want too much more because otherwise it builds up and then it gets stuck in the shaker so I would say to you that that is absolutely plenty in there as you can see that amount then I peel off my sticky very carefully so that none of the beads and sequins ping out on me and then I'm going to line it up so my bottom as I want it is on the bottom cut that sequin and then I'm going to line this up so my um, white pieces top bottom etc etc and then I'm going to line it up onto here and stick it down. And I'm going to give it a good push to stick it down. Like so. So now it's stuck onto my foam strips. And then you'll see now I can just turn it over and I can easily take off my tape. Like so. There we go. And I'm going to stick it to the top of my box. Now I stick it with the top being at the folded panel of my box. So I'm just going to hold that down for a second. And my tip when you have finished filling your box is if you put one glue dot just on this panel here and stick it in, it's enough to hold it down. Um, it's, but it's still easy for the recipient to open. So if you do just do that, you can stick one glue dot there. And the only other thing that we need to do is we need to do our final decoration. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a scrap of Whisper White. I have my Dapper Denim and my Real Red stamp pads. And I'm going to use the Jar of Love, the Hello uh, Happy Fishes, Hello Fishes, Best Fishes. So I'm using my Best Fishes. And then I really like the border that fit perfectly out the Birthday Banners set which is here and then I'm going to grab my stamp and I'm going to do that in the red so I'm going to stamp out my best fishes and we'll peel that one off for now and I'm going to stamp my label line that up over the top stamp it down and in the coordinating birthday banners and framelit set there is the perfect framelit just to take that out of there so I'm going to line that up I've loaded up my big shot here let's take all of these items 
off and put them to the side. So put this on our big shot platform. So I'm just running this through the big shot to give us our label. There we go. You can see here. There's our best fishes. And I'm going to stick that with some snail onto this top piece. Ooh. There we go. And the final touch is just to add our pearls in between. So in between each of the white pieces of twine, I used some of There we go. And there you have the two shaker boxes. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I'm just going to enter this now into the Global Design Project contest and we'll see you again soon. Happy stamping. Bye. Mm -hmm.